All right, a synapse is gonna be a functional connection between a neuron and another cell that is being signaled. Uh, this cell can be another neuron, or this can be a peripheral nervous system structure where this is a cell that is either in muscle, it's a part of glands, or it can be at um, a skeletal muscle specifically where we call this the neuromuscular junction. So a neuron can synapse on several different types of cells. If it's in the central nervous system, it's gonna be synapsing to another neuron. If it's in the peripheral nervous system, it can be another different type of excitable cell, which muscle, glands, or um, even skeletal muscle can be one of those types of tissues. Now, if one neuron is signaling another neuron, we talked about the presynaptic neuron being that first neuron in series, and then the postsynaptic neuron would be the second neuron that is being signaled or that's being communicated with. Based upon that, we can have different types of neuron uh, or neuronal synaptic connections. So a presynaptic neuron can signal the dendrites of a subsequent neuron. Uh, it can signal the cell body, or it can even signal the axon. So based upon where exactly on that postsynaptic neuron, the presynaptic neuron is engaging, that can form an axodendritic synapse if it's the axon synapsing onto the dendrites of another neuron. And remember, the dendrites are just the uh, uh, projections that are on the soma, on the cell body, that are receiving signals. And these are going to have some of the uh, channels, the ligand-gated channels, that are responsible for the graded potential as well. So axodendritic is axon terminal to dendrites. Axosomatic is axon terminal to soma or cell body. And then axoaxonic is axon terminal to the axon. Okay, now we uh, usually see uh, axodendritic synapses is the most common uh, or most abundant type of synapse in the nervous system. And the synaptic transmission is usually one directional. So it's gonna be from the presynaptic neuron to the postsynaptic neuron in, in most of the cases. Now, synapses can be electrical or chemical. This is why we say in most of the cases, because in an electrical synapse, we're going to talk about a bidirectional type of movement. But in the majority of our synapses throughout the body, those are usually chemical synapses. And this is where we have a unidirectional uh, signal or communication. So we have two major types of synapses, electrical and chemical. Chemical is much more abundant and we're gonna spend more time focusing on the details of the chemical synapse. Okay. So we describe the synapse as being a functional association with another neuron or another type of cell, a muscle cell, cardiac muscle cell, skeletal muscle cell, smooth muscle cell, or even a glandular epithelial cell. Um, so this is what it would look like. So here's our presynaptic neuron. Here's the postsynaptic neuron. And this is the most common uh, type of synapse, which is the axon terminal synapsing onto the dendrites. The axodendritic is gonna be the most common form. Now, if we were to zoom in on what's happening at the synapse, we're gonna see that the axon terminal is where the... Um, the neurotransmitter, so this is specific to chemical synapses. The neurotransmitter is what separates a chemical synapse from an electrical synapse. So in this lower panel, this is an example of a chemical synapse because we have chemical compounds that are helping in that synaptic transmission versus electrical synapses, which are at the top here. And this is where we have electrical signals being passed from one neuron to the other or from one cell to the other. So the way that this happens is through these connections or gap junctions that are inserted in the membrane. So the major difference that we kind of want to uh, you know, separate here is that with an electrical synapse, there's no required uh, chemical compound. There's just the electrical energy being passed from one cell to the other. In a chemical synapse, we require chemical compounds, and they need to cross the synaptic junction 
and they're going to need to bind to a receptor that is specifically suited for that chemical. Let's first by look, start by looking at the electrical synapse. Again, this is much more rare throughout the body and also very poorly understood. Um, so this is where true neurons are linked together by a gap junction. Um, sometimes this can be between neurons, right, two adjacent neurons, or a neuron and a glial cell. A glial cell is a, a supporting cell. We're going to talk about those in our next packet as well. So it can be between two neurons or a neuron and a supporting cell. Now, the functions of electrical synapses are for rapid communication. So if you think about what we just described, where a chemical synapse, the energy has to be converted from an electrical form, which is the action potential, to a chemical form, which is the neurotransmitter being released. And so that kind of slows down the a rate of communication for a chemical synapse. For an electrical synapse, on the other hand, that transmission is much more rapid because it never needs to be converted. It's going to always remain as electrical energy and the gap junctions, which are in between kind of adjoining these two neurons, is what helps with that rapid communication from one neuron to the other. Uh, it's also usually going to be uh, bidirectional and it's going to use ions or second messengers. So it's going to, again, keep the form of energy as electrical. So it can be the movement of sodium through the gap junctions that helps to depolarize the adjacent neuron. Uh, or it can be some second messengers like calcium and so forth that can move through the gap junction and do um and depolarize as well. So again, because we don't have to convert that into chemicals, that can be much faster. And also because of the gap junction, this can be bidirectional. So it can go back and forth from one neuron to the other. Now, just like with any other synaptic communication, it can be an excitation or an inhibition happening at the exact same neuron. Some of the areas that we find this in the body are gonna be the retina, so the eyes, the cortex of the brain, uh, the, the cortex, yep, the cerebral cortex of the brain, or even the brain stem. So the lower parts of the brain, the medulla, the etc. And it can also be the hypothalamus. So in the hypothalamus, we have lots of neuroendocrine neurons that are going to help to release certain chemical compounds. And the way that these communicate are by uh, electrical synapses only. So that is the electrical synapse, and that is, again, much rarer throughout the body. We're going to shift gears and look at the chemical synapse, which is much more important, much more abundant, um, and it has some very unique features that will differentiate it from electrical synapses. So when we look at the function of a chemical synapse, again, we have a presynaptic neuron and a postsynaptic neuron. Now we have a wider distance in between these two neurons. And this is what we refer to as the synaptic cleft. So in electrical synapses, there's no cleft, right? There's no distance. These two neurons are flush against each other and they're communicating with that gap junction. With a chemical synapse, there's a wider gap. That's another reason why these synaptic communications are slower um, for chemical synapses. The movement is also unidirectional, especially because of the refractory period. We kind of talked about that earlier. So the movement is always going to be down the length of the neuron and then from presynaptic to postsynaptic. Uh, usually, so the most common form we said is axodendritic, which is going to be this example here. So axon terminal synapsing onto the dendrites of the postsynaptic neuron. Um, this is going to be the most common type of synapse that we see, but you should also understand that other types of synapses can exist, such as the axoaxonic and the axosomatic, so synapsing right onto the cell body or synapsing onto the axon itself. And we're going to come back and look at the axoaxonic. This is an example that we're going to talk about later on, so maybe put a star on this one. Uh, when we describe the example of how that one communicates. There's also sometimes dendrodendritic synapses, very, very rare, um, but they can occur where we have one dendrite synapsing 
onto the adjacent dendrite of the postsynaptic neuron. Now, our second objective is to uh, look at the communication across chemical synapses, and we're going to explain how neurotransmitters are released and describe their actions after they are released. So really the details of chemical synapses. And in order to do that, we need to think about the anatomy of the synapse and describe some of the terms. So the presynaptic axon terminal, what is that? That is the axon ending of the presynaptic neuron, sort of the swelling at the distal end of the axon. The neurotransmitter containing vesicles, those are gonna be these little uh, vesicles or um, swellings within the axon terminal that contain the neurotransmitter that is gonna cross the synaptic cleft. Now, voltage-gated calcium channels, we described this earlier. These are the types of channels that are found uh, specifically on the axon terminal. And we're gonna look at how they behave a little bit differently from say the voltage-gated potassium or voltage-gated sodium channels that are found more so on the axon of the neuron. So anywhere uh, proximal or closer to the cell body, um, anything beyond the axon terminal, it's gonna be more so voltage-gated sodium and potassium channels but on the very end of the neuron are voltage-gated calcium channels, very important. Then we have the synaptic cleft, which is the distance between the presynaptic neuron and essentially the, um, the uh, cell body or the dendrites of the postsynaptic neuron. So this region here is called the synaptic cleft, sometimes called the synaptic junction. Then we have receptors. And receptors are going to be on the postsynaptic neuron, on the membrane of the adjacent neuron. Um, they're going to be specific to the neurotransmitter that is on the presynaptic side of the neuron, right? So whatever neurotransmitter is in here, usually acetylcholine, but we'll talk about some others, um, that is going to be released into the junction and it's going to specifically bind. So notice that the shapes here are matching, which means that this is a specific binding or the receptor on the postsynaptic neuron. We also have enzymes. So the en enzyme that is specifically on the postsynaptic neuron, uh, its function here is to essentially degrade or, or um, um, kind of uh, remove any excess neurotransmitter after that signal has been sent. So any extra neurotransmitter that has not been bound to a receptor will be degraded by the enzyme that's also on the membrane. And then on the presynaptic side of the cleft, we have these reuptake molecules. So the function of this is to reabsorb any extra neurotransmitter from the junction. So both the enzyme and the reuptake molecule, they have a similar goal. Their role is to clear the junction after the signal has been sent. And that is extremely important in terms of ceasing that signal or ceasing that communication. 